Do you want to use Stream Deck to activate the Apple Color Picker? Well, if so, stick around. I'm going to tell you how to do it in this video. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and in this video, I'm going to show you about a technique that I've been using to pick off the color off the screen for all of ooh, about five minutes. <laughs> I've literally just been shown how to do this today, and so I wanted to share it with you all as well because it is something that is really useful. Uh, if you are someone who uses the Apple Color Picker to be able to go and just pick, click on the screen to pick out a particular color, uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about, shall we? <laughs> this thing here, the Apple Color Picker. By the way, I did do a full video all about this because um, it's something that I think a lot of people overlook some of the functionality of it so the way that uh, as well as obviously being able to choose a picture from this familiar uh, rainbow wheel here or whatever you want to call it <laughs> um, you can also uh, uh, do this by adjusting the various different codes for either RGB, CMYK, HSBC, HSBC <laughs> not the bank, <laughs> HSB <laughs> um, and uh, gray sliders uh, and there's various other different ways you can do it and you can save different palettes and all this sort of stuff so as I say I did do a full video all about the functionality of the color picker and I'll leave a link to that directly above um, however <laughs> I hadn't been able to actually activate this with Stream Deck and it wasn't something to be honest with you that I'd really thought about until I saw a video uh, I think last week by uh, Nutty on their channel which was uh, this one uh, here Stream Deck plugins you have to try out and one of those Stream Deck plugins by the way I'll leave a link to that video in the description um, one of the uh, uh, plugins that uh, they were recommending to try out was a color picker plugin for the Stream Deck which enabled you to uh, basically just grab any color off the screen with a uh, touch of a Stream Deck button uh, and then it would save that and then you could paste the hex code in or whatever you wanted into whichever application you were working in. Uh, really useful I thought went to try and install it on uh, my Stream Deck and then realized it was a PC only uh, plugin uh, of which there are quite a few on Stream Deck uh, and so they hadn't made the uh, Mac version of it so I kind of wrote it down on a list must get round to figuring out how to do that uh, and never got around to it in the last week. <laughs> anyway, uh, just today there was a question asked in the uh, or a comment made in the uh, Discord group with uh, Doc Rock's Discord group, uh, link in the description, um, from Eileen mentioning this video and wondering if there was another way to do this in uh, in on the Mac as well. And then to the rescue came Dina with a great suggestion and an app that I'd never even heard of. So uh, thank you, Dina. I'll leave a link to uh, Dina and Eileen's channel, obviously, in the description as well. Uh, Eileen's got loads of great tutorials. Uh, and if you're feeling hungry, <laughs> then definitely head over and check out uh, Silver Lining Home Place, uh, Dina's cooking channel. So let's have a little look at this application because uh, it's basically the Apple Color Picker uh, as a standalone application, but with some great little features added into it. So uh, basically you need to go to the app, uh, Apple App Store and then search for the System Color Picker app. Again, link will be in the description, of course. Uh, and when you open that up, if we look at the uh, familiar Apple Color Picker, which looks uh, like this one, uh, if I open up this um, uh, System Color Picker app, it looks like this. So it looks pretty similar, doesn't it? In fact, let me bring the other one up on screen as well. Uh, you've got the same controls along the top. So we've still got the uh, color wheel. We've got the different sliders, the palettes, uh, uploading an image and the different uh, pencils with the different colors in. Uh, well, this has got exactly the same along the top. Uh, and it does actually just bring in all of your settings from the Apple Color Picker as well. So any uh, uh, ones that you've saved. So if I come in here, these are all my saved palettes. Those are all in there ready to go as well. It's got the familiar um, swatches down at the bottom. Uh, but then what it's also got is these uh, extra fields here. Uh, where are they gone? These ones. So you'll notice that it's got these things in here. And basically that is as you are uh, picking a color with the uh, the eyedropper, um, then it is just showing you the, uh, the hex codes there for them and all the different other codes that you've got as well. There's also some other built-in functionality because it's got a, uh, a few keyboard shortcuts. So let's have a little look at those, shall we? In fact, let me get this one out of the way and then I'll just get up the keyboard shortcuts. So um, here, once you've uh, activated the color picker, so I'm gonna use this and uh, let's just take one. I'm gonna just 
pick a color out of these swatches but it doesn't really matter uh, so there you go i've picked out a color there you can see how it's put in the hex code uh, and then it's got these other codes for uh, different ways to refer to the colors um, and there is a couple of hotkeys that you can use here so now that i've actually used the picker and by the way there is a shortcut for the color picker as well just command p uh, so that is the way to activate that color picker in fact let's look at my desktop color shall we um, now what I can do is, now that I've used the picker to pick the color, uh, I can then go in and just uh, use this sh keyboard shortcut, Shift Command H, uh, and that's going to copy the hex code of that particular color. So if I was to open up a little uh, notes uh, file, one second, so that we can just prove that this is working. <laughs> There we go. Now, if I just do Command V to paste, that has pasted in the hex code of that color that I've just picked. Uh, pretty neat. If you want to uh, copy the uh, uh, RGB, for example, Command Shift R, then we've got that one. Uh, paste that one in. In fact, did that do it? Let me do that again. <laughs> Command P. Whoops, a daisy. You see, you've got to be in the application, but don't worry, I've got an even better shortcut for this in a moment. Uh, so if, I'm, if, I'm, if I am in the Color Picker application, the shortcut works. <laughs> so I'm going to pick that. Uh, then I need to do uh, Command Shift R to copy it. And then I'm going to come into my text and I'm going to paste that in there. And there you can see we've now got the RGB. So it's great that you've got all these keyboard shortcuts, but you do need to be in the app in this way for it to work. But there is a better way to do all of this, and that's what I'm going to show you. And that's the one that we're going to program into the Stream Deck. Uh, personally, I almost exclusively work with hex codes in what I'm doing. So the one that I would want as a Stream Deck button is I just want a button to be able to press it uh, and know that it was just gonna copy the hex code of wherever my mouse happened to be uh, at that time. And then I'd just go and paste it into whatever application I wanted to use that in. So that is uh, my sort of use case of it, but I'll show you some variations we can do on that. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come back into the uh, Color Picker app and then I'm going to open the preferences. So I'm coming over to just the main menu and preferences. Uh, and this is going to open up the preferences for the app. So this is basically how it looks when you first uh, start it up. This is the default preferences. And the first one is stay on top. So that just means that this window uh, is going to stay on top of all the other windows. Even if that is the active window, you can see this one is still hovering over it. So like that. Uh, so then we've also got the option to have it show in the menu bar instead of in the, in the dock because at the moment it is running as an application and so it is sitting in my dock. Uh, well, I'm going to have this just running in the background because I do do this sort of thing quite often. So I'd rather have it just running in the menu bar and uh, running all of the time when I've got the Mac open. So it's always ready to uh, be used when I need it with my Stream Deck. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change this one to show in menu bar instead of in dock. And that has now added it up into my menu bar. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, launch at login. So I definitely want that happening because I want it to uh, basically launch every time my Mac starts. So it's always there ready to use. Uh, hide the menu bar icon. Well, I'm not actually going to do that because I use Bartender to organize my menu bar. Uh, I did do a video all about Bartender, so I'll leave that <laughs> just up above as well uh, because that allows me to organize all of the different menu bar icons that I've got so that it's not too cluttered with too many icons. So uh, no point to uh, hide the menu bar icon for me. I still want it accessible there. Um, and then when clicking on the menu bar icon, what do we want it to do? Uh, you can either have it show the color sampler, toggle the main window on and off, or just show the menu. So there is a little drop down menu. Uh, for what I'm going to be using this for, I probably am not going to be activating it from the menu bar itself too much. I'm literally just going to be using this Stream Deck uh, uh, button. So I'm just going to leave that one as it is for now. Uh, next one, I'm going to go up to the uh, color here. And here you've got some uh, different options. So with hex codes, at the moment, the way it's displaying the hex codes, if we look down at this little note here, you can see it's got the hex code. Um, it's in uh, sort of a mixture of, uh, well, it's in lowercase letters and numbers. Uh, there is, hasn't got the sort of pound sign or the hash sign uh, in front of it. Um, and so you can choose to have those if you want. So if you want to have all uppercase hex colors, then you can do that. And so that will change the format of it. Uh, you can also prefix the color with the hashtag, the pound sign. Uh, so I'm going to 
put that one on as well uh, because in most of the applications I use it would be beneficial to have that included um, and then the next one is use legacy syntax for HSL and RGB uh, I don't need to do that because I'm just going to be using the regular way of laying those out if ever I do but in fact I'm only really going to be using the uh, hex codes in any case um, the next one is the preferred color format. So out of the different color formats, you can choose a particular preference and you'll see why this is going to be useful in a moment. Um, but you uh, can just bear in mind here that we can change this one. And then here you've got the different uh, formats that you want to be shown in this window down here. So you can toggle these on and off and you can see that as I toggle them off, they're just gonna disappear from view. I am gonna leave those all on because if I do have this window open, I think it's useful to be able to see all of those, uh, albeit I'm not probably not gonna open that to too much. Um, so I am gonna leave all of those toggled on. Uh, next, we're gonna come on to the shortcuts. And here you've got the, uh, the option to record a shortcut to pick the color. Now, I did mention that we have already got a shortcut for pick color, which is command P. But as I mentioned earlier, that only works if the application is actually uh, sort of open on screen uh, rather than just running in the background in the menu bar. Whereas this one is going to uh, allow you to basically pick a color using a global shortcut. So I'm gonna record a shortcut here, which is my handy <laughs> four finger modifier plus P. <laughs> uh, I'm not too bothered about that being a little bit tricky to get my fingers over because I'm gonna be triggering this with Stream Deck ultimately. Um, and then you can also uh, record a shortcut to just toggle this window up. Um, I'm not going to do that one for the moment. Uh, the next one along is this advanced tab here. Uh, and this is the one where we're going to want to tick a couple of boxes. Uh, show, so the first one is show color sampler when opening window. Uh, that's an option. You may or may not want that. So when you open the window, do you want it to uh, show the uh, the color sampler to begin with? Um, I'm going to leave that one off. The next one, though, is copy the color in the preferred format after picking. Uh, so that is the one that's going to enable us to program this in one button with the Stream Deck with a single action because we do already have in our shortcuts section, we've already programmed uh, the pick color. And in fact, let me just show you. Uh, I don't now have, uh, I've now got text edit as my active application but if I just use that shortcut then you can see that it's triggered the color picker and so if I come down here I can pick a color from anywhere on here let's pick this gray and because we've now also uh, if we come in here <laughs> I didn't have it selected if we select this one copy color in preferred format after picking uh, and then I do that again so I'm going to come down here and pick this gray using my color picker like that it has now copied that hex code to the clipboard in the background as well so now if I just come in here and just use the regular command V for paste, it's now copied the hex code of that particular gray color there. Um, then there's another option down here. Uh, and so that is the crucial one to have ticked, by the way. Uh, there is also an option here, use larger text in text fields. Uh, that's basically just gonna change the size of the text in these fields here. I'm all about smallest possible text size, so I'm not gonna toggle that one on. Uh, but that now is it. So now basically what I can do is I can close this down and I can close this down, but our color picker is still going to work. So let me just bring something up that's a different color. In fact, let me just bring this red subscribe button. I wonder what color that is. Well, now I can use my keyboard shortcut, Command Shift Option Control P, <laughs> and I can just pick that red color there. And it has already copied the uh, uh, hex code over. And now if I paste it, that is the color of the red in the YouTube subscribe button. So there's only one step to do now extra, and that is to come over to our Stream Deck. And I've got a little space here. Uh, and all we need to do is uh, use the most basic of uh, Stream Deck uh, actions, which is in the uh, system group of actions, uh, we're going to come down here and just grab the hotkey. And I'm going to drag that over to there. Uh, and then we're simply just going to use the hotkey that we programmed, which was, uh, in my case, command alt control shift <laughs> P. <laughs> uh, and now if I just change the title of that, obviously, I will be going in and making a uh, custom icon for this. Uh, but for the moment, I'm going to use uh, English spelling of color, <laughs> uh, color picker, there we go, so I know what it is. Um, and now if I press that button on my Stream Deck, what you'll see is it activates that color picker. And so I can go over here, maybe I'll grab this yellow, and then I'll just bring my little text file up here, click down here and paste, and that is the color that I'm using for the yellow in those Stream Deck buttons. Uh, and so that is it really, it's as simple as that. You can obviously, if you want, go and program, uh, instead of using the hex code 
color. So you could use the uh, default uh, being for the uh, RGB or whichever color format you prefer, uh, but the process will be the same. You could also assign a keyboard shortcut if you wanted for that one to actually pop up the color picket as well. Uh, so that is something that you can do if you wish. <laughs> so I hope you've found that useful. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to go down and hit the like and subscribe button and uh, Obviously, if you found it really useful, then you can head over to my Buy Me A Coffee page to support me on a one-off basis or on an ongoing basis with a subscription. But apart from that, do also go and check out Eileen's great videos. She's got literally years worth of amazing tutorials, so check out her channel. Link is in the description. And if you're feeling hungry, definitely check out Silver Lining Home Place with Dina. Uh, and link to that is also in the description as well. And thank you, Dina. <laughs> You've just made my life a lot easier, so it's much appreciated. Uh, I will leave a link to some of my other uh, Mac productivity apps over on the right hand side uh, and YouTube is going to pick a great video for you just over on the top as well. So until the next video, have a wonderful day.